The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. My name is Terry Erzman. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Percona. The, uh, before we get started here, just wanted to quickly check if you uh, could please raise your hand if you can hear me in the GoToWebinar control panel. Very good. Thank you for uh, raising your hand. I see quite a few hands raised. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I have a couple of announcements before we start today's webinar. We will be making a recording of the webinar, and uh, we will send out a link later today to both the webinar as well as the slides from today's presentation. If you have any questions during the webinar, please submit them in the questions window in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll answer as many of those as we can at the end. It's my pleasure to welcome Vadim Tachinko today. Uh, Vadim is the co-founder and CTO for Percona, and uh, Vadim will speak about MySQL and SSD. Vadim? Yes, uh, hello, hello everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Vadim Tkachenko, CTO at uh, Percona, and uh, I'm quite uh, excited about Flash, uh, about the uh, performance it uh, proposed. That's why I decided to share my knowledge and uh, my experience with uh, Flash today. And I hope you will find it also uh, exciting. And then, um, as much as like uh, Flash, the, uh, our world is still based on uh, spinning uh, drives. The most data is still uh, stored on uh, hard drives. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, performance of hard drives is uh, limited by uh, mechanical parts. Uh, you know, it has a, um, a spinning disk. It, it has a, a, a moving head. And uh, there is just a, a theoretical limit uh, 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 how much performance it can propose. We probably cannot uh, uh, rotate much faster. Uh, we had uh, 7,000, 10,000, now we have 15,000 rotation per minute, but uh, probably this is it. And uh, it uh, still uh, proposes us only milliseconds our access time uh, to to data. Uh, what we, we uh, possible, uh, possibly can do, we uh, add more spindles, uh, like we, we can have one, two, four spindles, uh, but uh, it still uh, gives us uh, milliseconds uh, response time. More spindles uh, uh, does not uh, improve uh, access time, it just improves how uh, much data you can transfer per unit of time. And uh, this uh, uh, milliseconds is uh, uh, kind of uh, very big when we speak about databases. Uh, compare it to uh, uh, random access memory, which uh, proposes us uh, nanoseconds response time, and uh, in milliseconds is just a million times, uh, uh, million times uh, bigger. Uh, in fact, my graph, my graph, uh, my diagram does not show a real picture because if I had to put it in a real scale, I would need to have a million pixels on my screen, and my screen does not have that. And this million time difference uh, propose uh, give us a, a dramatic uh, performance hit uh, uh, as, uh, as soon as we start um, accessing to to disks. When uh, our data fits into memory, we have one a performance line, and as soon as data exceeds memory, we have a very, very significant performance hit. It's like uh, at some point uh, on my graph, uh, it just 10% increase of data gives 70% uh, uh, throughput drop. And uh, it uh, may be very, uh, very painful uh, user experience uh, when uh, you see that we have a lot of uh, consulting uh, requests uh, to help uh, with this kind of problem. And uh, uh, this is uh, where uh, Flash, uh, Flash uh, com comes into play. Uh, Flash uh, actually um, uh, provides very good feed because uh, Flash uh, um, provides uh, as a microseconds uh, uh, response time. So it fits between uh, random access memory and uh, spindle disks. 
in the in the we do, if you look on a graph uh, what kind of performance flash can propose us uh, we can expect like four or more time difference comparing to regular uh, hard drives yes we still have some performance drop but it may be not that uh, dramatic like with a regular hard drive so uh, I would like uh, to uh, review some flash internals to understand the just uh, mechanic and the physics behind flash. I believe uh, understanding that allows us to understand how we uh, can uh, I tune and adjust uh, application uh, uh, to work uh, with uh, flash devices. So, uh, flash uh, actually is a very good name for this technology uh, because uh, flash uh, kind of uh, explains two sides of uh, uh, technology. Uh, first, it is a, a really fast. Uh, you know, it we can say it is fast as flash. And uh, uh, second, it also defines how it internally handles the data. Internally, it erases data using process very similar to photographic flash. It just uh, performs this uh, light blink to erase a, a part of data and. Actually, this process is very slow, uh, so this is most uh, most uh, slower process in, 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 in internal in flash. So it's kind of funny because it defines how flash actually can be uh, uh, slow. And uh, uh, when we speak about flash to erase data, and flash affects a big big area. Uh, uh, flash uh, uh, erase data from uh, 128 to actually half of a mm, uh, megabyte uh, uh, the data size. And the flash internally, uh, internally it is write uh, uh, only once process. When you uh, uh, write a chunk of data, a flash cannot uh, rewrite it. Usually, flash uses four four kilobytes block for uh, writes, and to uh, 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 rewrite a chunk of data, you need to go through this uh, 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 erase process. So you write data, and to uh, rewrite it, you need to perform erase, which is a, which is a slow process. So internally, we do not have a, a, a writing flash. If you change the block of data, internally, that the block of data, four kilobyte, uh, or whatever block size is used internally, is marked as used. And instead, a, a write goes to a new and unused uh, space. Uh, so internally, a write is a, a, a kind of a sequential process. And uh, internally, flash uh, organized uh, like a log structured uh, file system. It only can uh, uh, add the new data. It, it cannot uh, write it. Uh, but uh, uh, that means that we can get uh, fragmented areas. If you look on, on this picture, uh, some blocks are already uh, cannot be used, and uh, some still uh, has uh, good data. And uh, this is uh, when a garbage collector in Flash comes uh, into place. Uh, uh, we cannot just erase a full this uh, area because it still has good blocks. And uh, to, erase, to, to uh, erase this block, the garbage collector has to move good blocks to, to new areas. And uh, uh, that's why we have uh, uh, some um, uh, uh, write uh, amplification factor. The uh, flash internally uh, writes actually more data than you write uh, from uh, application because uh, uh, again to uh, erase uh, some data, flash internally needs to move uh, some blocks uh, uh, around. And that means that software actually uh, 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 software which uh, handles writes and the garbage collector is a uh, 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 very important. Uh, uh, it is as important as uh, uh, Apple iOS and uh, or Android on your smartphone. Without uh, software, your smartphone, your smartphone 
it's just a hardware brick in that software which defines uh, behavior of uh, of your smartphone. And the, the same for, uh, for Flash. Uh, uh, Flash uh, keeps some firmware uh, internally uh, on some uh, 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 area and the uh, vendors uh, uh, usually provide some regular updates uh, uh, of firmware which uh, fixes some bugs and uh, fix some problem. If you uh, look on my recent uh, blogs on my scale performance blog, I just posted two, mm, two blog posts about Fusion I.O. with old drives and with new drives. And we, where you can see that a new driver, a new firmware actually fixes some significant uh, problems with uh, Fusion I.O. So flash quality is in big uh, regard defined by software. It is kind of easy to put a couple of flash modules on card and there is kind of like 50 or 100 vendors right now on the market. But it is much harder to, to create quality software. For flash we need to have a low structured file system which works with a leveling algorithm because of flash. Uh, characteristics that you can write only limited amount of time. Flash needs to uh, level uh, level uh, 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 writes and to provide equal amount of uh, writes on each mo module. And uh, uh, also a garbage uh, collector comes into play. And all uh, these factors define uh, quality of your uh, flash uh, flash card. The, uh, there, there, there is two big uh, kind of, of, of flash is SLC and MLC. Uh, I, I would like to uh, describe uh, both of them to understand the uh, difference. Uh, uh, SLC is a single single level cell. Uh, apparently, it, it can store only one bit of information. From an erase state it can go only to zero and to one state. Well, Multi-level cell, uh, uh, there is two bit or uh, three bit uh, uh, types of uh, uh, MLC. For um, two bit, we uh, can store obviously four, four uh, uh, states of information and uh, for three bit we can store eight, uh, eight states. And uh, this difference defines how much information you can uh, store uh, uh, per uh, 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 area. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, MLC can store more information uh, per given uh, uh, area space. And uh, that also defines that MLC drives, they can provide bigger uh, capacity than uh, SLC drives. Uh, but uh, uh, there, uh, there is significant drawback of uh, MLC technology. Uh, uh, SLC can handle uh, uh, like uh, uh, 100,000 uh, uh, erase cycles, and uh, uh, MLC uh, for MLC it uh, it is much less. For MLC we're speaking of like 10,000 cycles, and actually new uh, MLC technology 25 nanometers. Uh, it only proposes uh, 5,000 uh, uh, erasing cycles. So uh, this is a uh, downside of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, MLC. So uh, for uh, SLC, uh, we're getting benefits. It's a, a very uh, a reliable, uh, proposing very good uh, performance uh, uh, devices. And the drawbacks, uh, it has a very limited uh, capacity. I have seen drives only up to 800 gigabytes. It also, it is very expensive. We are speaking about like 30, 50 uh, dollars per uh, gigabyte for uh, SLC uh, devices. And the um, MLC devices, uh, they provide, they now can provide very good uh, capacity. Their models with more than one terabyte of uh, data on market. 
uh, uh, they are much uh, cheaper. Uh, I put uh, 10, 15 dollar per gigabyte, but uh, I see that MLC market goes now in a price, uh, uh, price uh, competitive area. So we might expect even uh, uh, more uh, price drop. I think we can speak about seven to eight uh, dollars per gigabyte for uh, MLC uh, very soon. And the, for um, as a drawbacks of MLC, uh, as I said, it has a, a limited lifetime, and uh, the, uh, also uh, 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 reliability is a question. When you you store more uh, information per area, it uh, uh, you can expect um, you will get more uh, uh, errors uh, in, 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 in in given area. Uh, that's why uh, actually MLC drives internally comes with uh, some additional uh, space. If you look on, uh, for example, on the Virident FlashMax card, which provides uh, 1.4 terabyte of data for end user, internally, it, uh, internally actually it is 2 terabyte. It uh, reserves uh, 0 0.6 terabyte of data for internal needs. So it can uh, replace uh, broken modules or it can use this internal space for uh, we are uh, leveling and for garbage uh, collecting it. Uh, uh, now uh, let's uh, look from uh, uh, other side. It is a uh, uh, SATA with a PCI AI Express uh, technology. And uh, this is interesting uh, uh, war story. Uh, SATA SSD, SATA SSD designed, uh, initially was designed to uh, replace hard drives. It did if you look on uh, on it, it is just one-to-one -one replacement of uh, hard drives. Uh, what is what possibly can be problem with SATA? Uh, let me tell you my uh, benchmark story. How I tried to benchmark two Intel 320 uh, SSD cards. So uh, initially, uh, I uh, bought uh, these Intel SSD cards. I opened my uh, server and apparently you see the server hardware is not is not uh, the uh, the stop uh, hardware. Uh, uh, to to be able to install uh, SATA drives into your uh, server, you need uh, uh, some components. You need uh, space to be able to put uh, drives somewhere. You need additional power for your drives, and you need some uh, RAID controllers or and the cables. So um, this was this was my initial setup. It uh, provides uh, power, it provides space, uh, cables, and it is good for testing, but it is not uh, uh, usable uh, in, in uh, production uh, systems. So uh, this is more more polished uh, uh, setup. Uh, you need to. Look, I had to come up with some external enclosure. Uh, which is uh, able to provide uh, power and uh, space uh, uh, to to handle your uh, uh, SATA drives. And uh, uh, additionally, you need some uh, RAID controller to, to install into your uh, server. I have, have a very good experience with uh, uh, two RAID controllers, LSI 9260 and uh, 9211. So if you're looking to work with uh, uh, SATA uh, SSD, you might take uh, uh, take a look on uh, these controllers. And uh, uh, also a funny uh, store, uh, story, you need, uh, apparently you also need uh, some uh, special uh, cable uh, to come from, uh, um, uh, 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 to connect a controller to your uh, enclosure. It's uh, kind of another $50. 50 and the uh, uh, PCI, PCIe cards are uh, are different. For uh, PCIe cards designed, you just put a PCIe card into a PCIe slot. There is no need for additional RAID controllers, enclosure, uh, cables, and uh, so PCIe is just uh, very easy to set up. Uh, uh, however, uh, uh, on uh, uh, other hand, uh, uh, SATA SATA uh, drives. Uh, are a uh, hot swap. When you install uh, SATA into enclosure, you can easily just uh, replace broken drives on a new one. It is not the case with 
uh, APCIE uh, cards where you need to shut down uh, server and to extract PCI cards to replace it on new one. Uh, okay, we uh, come uh, to uh, benchmark area, and uh, uh, this is my favorite area. You all know that all benchmark apply, but uh, I, I like to say that uh, Flash actually brings a, a, a this to a totally new uh, level of uh, life. Uh, uh, when uh, we benchmark uh, uh, flash drives, uh, there are a, a couple of challenges. Uh, first challenge is the performance of flash actually depends on the internal uh, uh, state of flash. And this internal state can uh, change uh, over time. And from this graph you see that initially after a fresh low level format, you get uh, one level of performance. Uh, then mm, uh, when we write a lot of data, um, uh, garbage collector starts to kick in. We get a significant performance drop to point B, and uh, then uh, over time it can uh, level on some on some uh, uh, level C. And uh, what's interesting, uh, flash vendors uh, they uh, like pretty much to publish bench num benchmark numbers from state A, and uh, it is not. Uh, always possible to understand what's real performance in the state B or C uh, are. Uh, uh, another benchmark challenge is uh, capacity. Uh, apparently in the flash, the more space you use, the worse uh, performance you might get. And uh, this again comes to uh, this garbage collector algorithm. Uh, garbage collectors, they need more free space to operate effectively. And the more space you use, the less space available for garbage garbage collectors. And you may see in general some performance drop. And sometimes it can be actually very significant. Like in this case, with the Intel drive, uh, you see like five times performance drop when we uh, uh, fill uh, card uh, uh, with full capacity. And uh, another problem with the flash benchmarks is that because of this space problem, garbage collector problems, and uh, capacity problems, your results are not quite repeatable. There I show results from first run, and then I repeat the same run with uh, the same workload, and you see I just getting totally different results from my uh, uh, second round. Uh, 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 also, operation systems and the Linux file system that does not help there. So uh, even you manage to uh, overcome all previous problems. Now you come to question what uh, file system you should use. And uh, obviously you want to, to use uh, uh, that one that uh, provides you best performance under Flash. And uh, this is one of the most popular uh, question I am asked. What uh, what uh, file system should I, I use when I install some Fusion I/O or uh, Intel Drive? Uh, so uh, let's see what uh, what we have there. Uh, uh, traditionally, XT3, XT4, uh, uh, it has uh, uh, some bug, or you can name it feature. It, it uh, serializes data in synchronous uh, uh, I/O when you use it with uh, Odirect. That's why traditionally we uh, recommend to use a, a XFS file system. Uh, 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 however, uh, uh, a new MySQL versions, when we speak about MySQL 5.5, Precona Server 5.5, uh, internally uh, MySQL Precona Server, it uses asynchronous input-output to, uh, to write data. And uh, when I start uh, benchmarking XFS using asynchronous I.O. mode, I found that XFS also has a similar uh, serialization bugs uh, when you run uh, asynchronous uh, I/O. So uh, I was told that XFS uh, developers already fixed this bug, this bug in the source code, and you might expect like four times improvement when you get that fix. Uh, however, I have no idea when the bug fix will be available on uh, uh, your uh, distribution. I traditionally run in uh, 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 Red Hat kernels, and 
it is very conservative, so it may take like a couple of years before the bug fix will be available. Uh, and uh, uh, I often hear that the battery is uh, uh, going to solve all problems. So it is uh, designed for SSD, provides so many new great features. And I usually ask, did you try it uh, yourself? And yes, I tried. And uh, my answer is that the battery is simple, not ready yet. Yeah, and I'm going to to show some numbers. You, you, if you follow my scale performance blog, uh, I hope next week I will pub publish some numbers to compare ButterFS with X4 uh, to show that ButterFS does not provide a good level of her performance. Uh, uh, there, uh, 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 I show numbers um, uh, 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 what you, uh, to uh, to explain what kind of uh, uh, problems with uh, uh, ext4 you, you may face. Uh, again, this is to this is corresponds to uh, to that uh, direct serialization bug. When we run uh, 64 files, ext4, we uh, get much better uh, uh, right throughput uh, than comparing it with a single file because ext4 on a single file it uh, serialized input uh, output and uh, this is not not a problem for uh, XFS file uh, file system uh, uh, there is still some performance difference uh, but uh, I would say it is uh, it, it handles uh, uh, throughput equally. Uh, but uh, when we come to uh, uh, asynchronous I/O, you, you see that in the current state of XFS, XFS provides like uh, uh, 30 percent less uh, 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 right throughput if we compare it to XT4. And uh, to add uh, more confusion to this uh, equation, uh, internally in uh, my scale, my scale uses. Uh, synchronous I/O for reads when you execute uh, select queries. Uh, uh, usually, internally it uh, uh, handled like a synchronous I/O and uh, writes writes which comes from buffer pool. Uh, they are written in a asynchronous way. And there is also one more mode in MySQL uh, which uses uh, Red Hat reads. Red Hat reads are usually also handled in an asynchronous way. So uh, what file system you should use, uh, I actually say it is a, should maybe your uh, decision. For me it seems that ext 4 at this point of time uh, provides better performance in asynchronous mode and you have, uh, you have right intensive application that uh, right now until that bug fix uh, available, it seems ext4 may be better uh, uh, choice than uh, XFS. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, as I said, uh, the benchmarks is uh, running proper benchmark is uh, very hard on the flash, but I still tried to compare uh, to get uh, some numbers just to get some basic sense what kind of what what some level of uh, uh, performance yeah, we can expect. So uh, I took a couple uh, drives uh, what I have uh, right now on my hands and I, I took a, a, a RAID 10 over 8 disk as baseline and I tried to compare it with a stack uh, SLC drive with a stack uh, SLC drives uh, four drives uh, I put them into RAID 10 uh, uh, I also took a, a very popular drive, Intel 320 SSD. This drive is based on is based on MLC technology, and I also took a PCIe card uh, with dent uh, uh, flash marks. Uh, why uh, I did not took uh, uh, another solution? Well, yeah, there there are some uh, there are more vendors on market. I would say. Like now it's maybe 50 or maybe 100 vendors. I just physically not able to test them all. I picked one which uh, interesting for me 
uh, uh, right now. Uh, so uh, uh, let's compare uh, uh, performance in uh, random uh, reads. It, uh, uh, we see that a single uh, stack drive uh, provides uh, like uh, for even more than 4x uh, improvement over eight uh, hard drives. And uh, for uh, stack drives, uh, uh, when we put them in RAID 10, it is expected to have like a 2x performance improvement. Uh, Intel, Intel uh, uh, in reads uh, not uh, not much behind the stack, uh, but uh, uh, reads uh, uh, this area when where, where we cannot see significant difference between SLC and MLC technology. And the uh, Virident uh, uh, provides um, uh, absolutely best uh, 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 random reads uh, throughput. Uh, but uh, uh, apparently, uh, obviously, it comes to price, and uh, I will show price numbers uh, just in a couple slides. And uh, uh, to compare uh, uh, random uh, uh, random uh, writes, uh, we see that the uh, stack uh, also provides like four x performance improvement. And uh, I would say Intel is MLC technology now or much uh, somewhat slower than the, uh, stack drives and. Uh, mm, uh, yeah, the numbers for uh, irredent uh, car. And the uh, 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 raw performance is interesting, but uh, as I said, it also comes to a uh, question of the, the price. So I tried to put some uh, idea what kind of uh, price you uh, might expect from that or another solution. Actually, I used quite expensive SAS disks. So you see, that even a single stack drives provide much better performance. It's actually cheaper than eight uh, hard drives. And uh, Intel cards are um, uh, available for mass market, and it is uh, it is a, a, a Intel drive available for uh, a, a affordable price. And the uh, Virident, uh, uh, you see. Um, uh, uh, I put some number uh, calculating from uh, fifteen dollar of four thirteen dollars uh, per gigabyte price. So uh, you see that the absolute best performance for uh, PCIe cards uh, it comes with uh, some uh, uh, price tag. So uh, uh, PCIe uh, uh, against uh, SATA, which which one uh, 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 to choose? So uh, I would say if you need uh, absolute performance. Yeah, uh, I would go with uh, PCIe cards uh, because again it uh, provides uh, absolutely best uh, uh, throughput and uh, uh, response time uh, numbers. Uh, and uh, I did not uh, compile uh, compile my uh, recent benchmarks uh, into this presentation, but you can go to my Skill performance blog and uh, see my blog post for two last weeks. I put some new numbers for uh, uh, additional. Uh, Fusion I/O and the Intel drives. And uh, if uh, I personally had uh, to install uh, 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 a Flash for my own servers, I would probably go with uh, uh, SATA drives. It seems that uh, SATA drives provide a quite reasonable performance per uh, per uh, dollar. So uh, it, it, this performance is uh, uh, lower than for PCIe cards. But when you calculate uh, how much we need to pay for it, it seems that uh, SATA uh, actually looks uh, looks uh, better. Uh, good question. When uh, 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 you should use uh, card? Uh, in, when you should use Flash in uh, your uh, environment? So uh, Flash is uh, very good for uh, uh, random reads. It's uh, both SLC and the MLC provides uh, a, a very good uh, performance on random read. Uh, if you have a, a, a random uh, writes, uh, it also provides good performance, but it may be challenge for uh, uh, MLC. Uh, it's uh, maybe challenge for uh, from a, a lifetime perspective. So if you take a look on SLC, SLC provides like maybe 20 years uh, lifetime. I think uh, this is more than enough. And uh, MLC, 
MLC lifetime, usually uh, MLC vendors, they measure a lifetime in some numbers like 8 petabytes of writes or 15 petabytes of writes uh, lifetime. So it uh, seems kind of uh, uh, big, but yeah, when you start thinking like 15 petabytes, how how much is it? So I, I, I tried uh, to calculate it, and uh, 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 please be aware, as I mentioned, that Flash internally writes more uh, data than application, and uh, this is because of that that uh, right amplification factor. So this uh, 15 petabyte it corresponds to internal flash of writes, not to, not to how many writes from application you can expect. So I did uh, some uh, experiment. Um, I put a TPCC MySQL workload on a very dense flash marks uh, MLC card. Uh, this card uh, uh, which uh, provides you 15 petabytes of writes lifetime. Uh, after some calculation, uh, uh, I figured out that right amplification factor it is a uh, uh, like 14%. Uh, uh, that means so uh, internally flash writes 14% more data than it comes from application. And uh, because uh, this card is uh, very fast, because this card can provide uh, very good uh, uh, write uh, performance, you actually can write about uh, one terabyte of uh, uh, data per hour. And if you just do a simple calculation, 15 petabyte to divide to one terabyte per hour, you can get a lifetime of 1.5 years lifetime for uh, for, for this uh, particular part. And uh, I'm not saying this is uh, good or, or bad. Uh, I'm saying this uh, to, uh, to understand when you use uh, MLC technology, you need to figure out how many rights you have to be able uh, to uh, justify if uh, that or another particular MLC card is a uh, appropriate for your environment or, or not. And uh, now we come question for Flash to uh, MLC. Uh, when uh, Flash, uh, flash for uh, MySQL, when uh, uh, Flash for, uh, can help in your uh, MySQL environment? I, I see uh, uh, this uh, uh, area uh, when you may uh, consider using flash with MySQL. Uh, first, if you have a uh, 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 very uh, low latency uh, requirement, if you need to, to be able to send a response in uh, uh, microseconds, uh, milliseconds, sorry, milliseconds uh, uh, time range. Uh, if you have a very large table joins, uh, mixed workload, it uh, also can help you with uh, uh, application uh, uh, lag if your slave is behind the uh, master that uh, Flash actually can, can improve that. If you have very high uh, throughput workloads or very uh, high uh, concurrent uh, uh, workloads. And the uh, most important uh, decision when you use uh, Flash uh, with MySQL, it, it, it is a uh, uh, what's the MySQL version uh, to, to run? Mm. Uh, I'm saying that because I still see that uh, some users use MySQL 5.1 with uh, standard NDB with Flash, and actually it does not provide uh, a good performance level. If you use Flash with this MySQL version, you just uh, waste your uh, Flash uh, power. Uh, to be able to, to get full power from Flash, you need to run multiple I.O. threads, and you need to have uh, asynchronous I.O. And uh, 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 for that, you can use a MySQL 5.5 version or Precona Server 5.5. Uh, in Precona Server, we provide additional tuning parameters, which can uh, allow you to get even better performance um, on, on Flash. And if you still uh, stuck with 5, one uh, versions, you might take a look on the Percona Server 5.1, which uh, comes with uh, extra DB, which is based on an NDB plugin. And uh, internally, it uses multiple IO threads and uh, asynchronous IO. 
So uh, let's uh, see uh, what kind of a performance improvement on, uh, on with MySQL you can expect. This uh, benchmark I use Preconosaur 5.5, and uh, uh, I compare uh, performance. Mm, I I try to measure performance or uh, stack mm, SLC drives uh, or four drives uh, put in uh, uh, in RAID 10. And for workload, I use a Cisbench LTP workload. Uh, with 100 uh, gigabyte of data in general and 50 gigabyte of memory is available for uh, MySQL for NEB buffer pool. So uh, if you just uh, compare mm, uh, uh, flash to uh, hard drive in this environment, you just uh, uh, out of box you can expect about eight times uh, performance uh, performance uh, improvement. Yeah, uh, the, the uh, good uh, uh, question comes uh, um, uh, to parameter uh, uh, flash logs at the uh, commit. Uh, in the previous benchmark number, I showed with uh, flash logs at the commit equal to, which uh, doesn't provide full uh, ACID uh, compliance to MySQL. And it seems this parameter is still uh, 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 critical for uh, performance even on Flash. Uh, when you uh, uh, run uh, in a full uh, ACID environment with TRX uh, uh, equal one, it seems it uh, very important to still have some cache to be able to to uh, uh, handle uh, that amount of uh, uh, durable transactions uh, per second. So you see, uh, 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 in this case, if you just switch from uh, two to one. We can get, we can see some significant uh, performance uh, drop. And uh, uh, to understand it, uh, uh, we need to, to understand what kind of workloads, what kind of I/O workloads MySQL handles internally. MySQL, um, uh, uh, MySQL has an uh, data, data files. Uh, MySQL also writes in DB read logs. Uh, MySQL we do write binary logs. And there is also an ADB uh, uh, system uh, table space. So uh, 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 location, uh, uh, it may be a good idea to uh, to figure out what kind of uh, storage you use for uh, that or another kind of uh, uh, um, yeah, files. So uh, again, uh, for uh, if you're looking to run in full ACID, ACID uh, compliance, we um, it may be a good idea to to put uh, NDB redo log files on uh, array with cache, because uh, cache uh, is still able to provide uh, better uh, performance than uh, SSD. So. Uh, uh, if you get back to previous numbers, uh, you can see if you put log uh, in the DB log on SSD, we get 490 transactions per second. And uh, when we move in the DB log files to uh, RAID with uh, uh, cache, we can get uh, performance uh, numbers uh, back to previous level, uh, like to uh, 400, uh, 740 transactions per second. And uh, 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 also uh, uh, another uh, uh, possibility is to use uh, also uh, is to use uh, uh, rate controller uh, uh, with the cache for uh, uh, solid state drives. The previous numbers I showed you for LSI 9211 which has no uh, internal cache but when we switch uh, uh, to more advanced uh, controller to LSI 9260, which comes with uh, cache, we see that we again can get uh, even more uh, performance improvement when we move uh, solid state drives to controller with um, cache. Another parameter which might uh, uh, be important to look into, it is a, 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 in a DB log file size. Uh, 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 you, you, you can see in Percona server we provide uh, support of uh, big 
uh, log files. We can set, uh, set log files more than 4 gigabyte, which is a limitation in MySQL. And uh, uh, these parameters uh, can help you to get a stable and predictable performance. In this graph you see our code uh, results with a uh, 2 gigabyte log file uh, comparing to uh, 8 gigabyte log file. You see that 8 gigabyte you get much better and uh, stable uh, performance. Uh, now, flashing uh, algorithm is uh, important. Uh, in uh, Percona Server, we did uh, a lot of uh, research how to provide uh, stability of performance, and the uh, standard MySQL comes with uh, some flashing algorithms which are not able to provide stable uh, uh, stable uh, throughput. For MySQL red lines, you see we have some periodic uh, drops. And in Percona Server, we provide a new uh, adaptive checkpoint method, keep average, which again can uh, allow you to get uh, better and uh, stable uh, performance. Uh, Terry, I see we might uh, be running uh, 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 out of time. I will take five more minutes, and then we'll uh, take five minutes for, for questions. So um, uh, uh, just a couple of uh, uh, last uh, points I would like to mention. that. Um, uh, double uh, right area also seems important, mm. and uh, there uh, uh, I'm trying to explain how it works internally in in a DB. When in a DB uh, writes data, it actually writes two times: first time to main storage, and second time to mm, uh, a double uh, right area. This is made uh, uh, for uh, protection because when we do uh, I/O on operation system level. Operation system, operation system divides I/O into four kilobyte block writes, and internally in the DB uses 16 kilobytes pages. So uh, it is possible when a page write 16 kilobyte divided into four kilobytes blocks, when you have power outage, that's only partial data is written to disk. So to have protection uh, from that, in the DB writes the same data two times, uh, that, is, uh, that is after crash, NDB is able to figure out uh, was it a partial write or, uh, or this was full write just to comparing data from two, two areas. And uh, double write is a very small uh, area in, uh, in, in, in NDB and uh, when we write to double write area, we write to the same area again in the game. And as I said uh, uh, previously, uh, it may be not uh, that a good idea for a uh, solid state drive to write the same uh, area because internally it, it uh, flash cannot uh, write into, into uh, the same page. Uh, and if you do that, we, get, uh, we may get very significant fragmentation and also it might tend to decrease uh, lifetime. Uh, uh, that's why uh, I actually could uh, recommend to uh, to consider to moving double write area to separate uh, partition. Uh, you can do it in Percona server using NDB double write uh, file parameter, or maybe just a good idea uh, if you use NDB file per table just to move a big data one file to uh, area outside of uh, uh, main. Uh, solid state uh, uh, partition. And uh, Terry, I think I, I uh, stop uh, on, th on this note. There are a couple more slides will be which uh, will, which are available for our website. And uh, uh, I just take uh, uh, another five minutes to answer on questions. On questions. Okay. Uh, good. Very good. Uh, again, if uh, anyone has questions, please submit them through the questions uh, area in your uh, GoToWebinar panel. Uh, so, uh, Vadim, the first question uh, we have is, um, is there a performance difference between MLC and SLC? Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, SLC in general provides a better performance. And um, I tried to show that on uh, on my benchmark when I compare the different uh, uh, 
uh, uh, different devices. So uh, uh, I suggest uh, 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 you open uh, my presentation uh, after this call and look on slides where I compare different devices to see performance difference between uh, stack SLC and uh, Intel MLC drives. But in general, yes, SLC is supposed to provide the best performance. Than, uh, MLC. Okay, the next question is, um, does putting SATA SSDs behind traditional RAID controllers cause a performance penalty for write throughput or random read latencies? Uh, so it, it actually de depends on a, a, a RAID controller. Uh, some a couple of years ago, uh, RAID controllers uh, actually were not uh, so good, but now I see they are picking up. That's why I recommended two models, LSI, LSI 9211 or 9216. These controllers uh, seems to be able to provide uh, uh, good throughput or uh, latency numbers. And uh, we also need to understand how many drives we can put into single controller because single RAID controller still can be bottlenecked because I have seen cases when RAID controller is not able to handle, for example, 24 drives. 24 uh, SATA drives still can provide much bigger throughput than a single RAID controller uh, can handle. Okay, and a follow-up question is, do you recommend a specific RAID level for SATA SSDs? Uh, uh, I, I, I probably would uh, go with uh, 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 RAID 10 uh, as the same as with uh, uh, hard drive, uh, hard uh, disks. It seems uh, RAID 10, it may be expensive, mm, more expensive than RAID 5, but it, it should be able to provide uh, good uh, data protection and a uh, good performance level. Okay, uh, next question is, how does Flash compare with memcached in the context of low latency requirements? Uh, uh, well, uh, it, uh, mm, uh, uh, it comes to uh, what kind of latency uh, Flash can provide. And uh, in my first diagram, I put that Flash can provide a microseconds level of latency and memory can provide nanoseconds level of latency. But memcache, which works with memory, obviously can provide better response time when you uh, work with the data which uh, stored on the Flash. Okay. Uh, next question is, uh, how do SSD drives fail when they reach their write limit? When the first blocks fail, will they be relocated and a warning will be issued, or will the drive fail completely right away? So, it again, it depends on the Flash uh, software. If you're working with uh, good uh, Flash vendors, uh, they uh, provide a good level of uh, protections. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, I, I know both Fusion I.O. and Virident, initially you will see some uh, messages in a, a, a kernel log that some blobs are, are, are already uh, died. And, but Flash uh, uh, should be able to uh, allocate bad data to new areas. That's, that's why Flash has some uh, reserved space. And uh, when it comes totally to, to end of life, to end of lifetime, uh, flash vendors protect drive by putting it only in a read-only mode. That is, it means you should be able to to extract your data and to replace drive at will. Okay. Next question is: uh, Given that software is so important, do you see significant differences between vendors for PCIe solutions? Are certain vendors good for particular workloads? Uh, yes, I, I absolutely see a difference. Uh, and again, uh, please take a look on my still performance blog. Uh, just a couple last my blog post. For example, you see the uh, performance numbers and the stability of performance for Fusion IO and the Virident. Especially for Fusion IO, you can see improvement when you go from old driver to new driver. And I know some other uh, flash vendors which oriented for consumer market, they uh, provide much worse software, which I would not uh, recommend to use. 
Okay. Uh, next question. Can you share any thoughts about the performance of SATA versus SAS rotating disks in terms of reliability? The numbers in terms of uh, reliability? No, I, I, I don't uh, have numbers to, to prove some uh, 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 reliability topic. Okay. Do you have any tips on using my ISAM on SSD? And no, uh, you know, uh, all my uh, research uh, uh, is uh, uh, focused on uh, NADB because I believe NADB is much uh, better than my ISAM. Our usual recommendation just to consider, uh, consider moving to NADB from my ISAM. Okay. Uh, do different vendors set aside different amounts of reserve space? Is that something to be aware of in the purchase cycle? Uh, yes. Uh, different uh, vendors put a different amount of uh, 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 reserve space. And uh, how it affects you, again, it depends on the flash software and on your workload. So my recommendation would be if you able to test it, test uh, cards, uh, test uh, cards, on your workload uh, before uh, committing to purchasing a big, uh, big, uh, big amount of cards. Okay. Uh, do you recommend the NODB double write file to be put on a regular SAS array behind array controller with cache as opposed to yes. SSD? Uh, yes, it seems a good idea to put uh, an NDB double write or just ABD data one file to to uh, uh, a regular uh, SAS array with cache. Okay. Are there SAS SSDs? Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure, but uh, I know that the current uh, uh, SSD, uh, like uh, SATA 3, uh, they provide a level of 6 gigabyte uh, level of uh, 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 connection. So it is on level with SAS, so it uh, should be equal. Okay, very good. Well, that's the end of our time. We still have some questions left. Sorry if we couldn't get to, uh, to your question today. Uh, we appreciate everyone's attendance. I would like to mention that uh, we've announced the call for papers for Percona Live New York, which is October 1st and 2nd in Manhattan. Uh, if you would like to submit a paper uh, or a proposal, the deadline is May 14th, which is Monday. So please log on to the Percona Live New York website to submit a, a, a paper for that uh, conference. Uh, we will post the slides from today's presentation as well as a, a link uh, to the uh, recording of today's webinar uh, on, uh, on the uh, Percona TV, TV website shortly, and we will send out an email to everyone who registered today once that uh, link is, uh, once that recording and the slides are available. Uh, thanks again for attending. We will have uh, a couple of new webinars in June, and we hope to see you there. Good day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.